What the heck is a dynamic array? A dynamic array is an array with a resizable capacity. If we need extra room for elements, we can increase the capacity, which we cannot normally do with a standard, typical fixed size array. Dynamic arrays are also known as ArrayList in Java, Vectors in C++, Arrays in JavaScript, and List in Python. Here's an example of a static array, and then we'll take a look at a dynamic array. A static array has a fixed capacity. We determine that capacity at compile time, and we can't change it later normally. In this example, I have a static array with a capacity of six elements and a size of five elements that are currently occupied. The last element is open, so it's null. Each element has a memory address. Obviously, these are not real memory addresses, but this is how I like to think about things. Imagine that all of these memory addresses are houses, and they're all next to each other. Now, accessing an element is easy because we have index numbers to work with. We can randomly access an element in O of 1 constant time. The size of our data set doesn't matter. However, searching for a stored value still takes time because we need to begin at index 0 and iterate over our array until we reach our value or the end in case we don't find it. This is done in O of n linear time. The larger the data set, the time to finish will increase linearly. And in the case of inserting or deleting, that takes linear time unless done at the end. No shifting of elements is required. However, the closer we need to insert or delete to index 0, we need to shift all elements that follow in order to make room for insertion or close any gaps in the case of deletion. So if I need to insert a value at, let's say, index 0, I have to shift all elements to the right by one to make room for this insertion. And then we can insert a value. Now currently with our static array, we're at capacity, our array is full, our size is equal to our capacity. Then in the case of deleting an element, we need to shift all elements that follow after this index where we're making the deletion and shift everything once to the left. So that would look like this. And our size is back to 5, so there is one element that is open. A major disadvantage of static arrays is that they have a fixed capacity. We can't increase the capacity once the size of the elements reaches capacity. In this separate example, I have an array with a capacity of 5 elements and a size of 5 elements, and it's completely full. I can't increase the capacity because the next memory block contains, I don't know, pictures of cats or something. You do you, I guess. A dynamic array has its own inner static array with a fixed size. Once the inner static array of our dynamic array reaches capacity, our dynamic array will declare and instantiate a new array with an increased capacity. Usually the amount that we increase the capacity by really varies depending on the programming language. It's usually between 1.5 and 2. I just picked capacity times 2 for extra emphasis. So what we'll do now is copy the elements over to our new array and these have different memory addresses than our original array. So that would look something like this. We now have a new array with double the capacity, but like I said, it really depends on the language that you're working with. It's usually between 1.5 and 2. This array has a size of 5 elements that are full and a total capacity of 10. Then if you need to shrink the capacity, like if you're not using a lot of elements, you can always just do the reverse process of what we did to increase it. Now, with this new inner array, the insertion and deletion of elements is really the same as a static array. So you just shift all the elements to the right by one to insert a new element, or shift all the elements to the left to delete an element. What are some of the advantages of dynamic arrays? One, there is random access of elements. That is done in O of 1 constant time. We can randomly access an element by an index number and retrieve the value. Two. There is good locality of reference and data cache utilization. Because all of these memory addresses are contiguous, they're right next to each other. Unlike with linked lists, you have to jump around a lot because all of the memory addresses are kind of random. And three, it's easy to insert and delete elements at the end because there's no shifting of elements required. And for the disadvantages, a dynamic array wastes more memory than a linked list because we need to increase the capacity to accommodate more elements if we need the extra room and we may not necessarily need all of this extra room. So a dynamic array wastes more memory than a linked list. Two, shifting of elements is time consuming. The closer we need to insert or delete closer to index zero, we have to shift all elements that follow afterwards to the right in case of an insertion or to the left in case of a deletion. And three, expanding or shrinking the array is time consuming because we have to copy all of the elements over to a new array with a different capacity. 
And that's the basics of a dynamic arrays. Let's create our own dynamic array for practice. All right, welcome back. We're going to create our own dynamic array using Java. In the future, if you ever do need a dynamic array, you might as well just use an array list. According to the description, it's a resizable array implementation of the list interface, and it's pre-built, so you might as well use it. I thought we would create our own dynamic array just for learning purposes and practice. But let's take a look at the array list class. Within this class, there are a few defined members. There's a default capacity set to 10. There are overloaded constructors within this array list class. We can set our own initial capacity, or we can use the default by not passing in an initial capacity. There is a size to keep track of how many elements are filled within our array list. And our array list does have its own inner static fixed size array. And if we ever need to expand the size of this array, we just copy the elements over to a new inner array. So let's begin. Let's create a new class named dynamic array, and I'll get rid of this. So file, new, class, and this will be named dynamic array, then finish. Okay, let's declare a few members. Let's create int size, int capacity. This will be the initial capacity. I'll set this to 10, but feel free to pick whatever value that you want, as well as an array of objects named array. I will declare this, but not yet instantiate it. So you can make these private. However, I think that'll make our code a little more complex and difficult to understand, although it'd be more secure. I'm just going to use the default visibility for these members here. All right, let's create some overloaded constructors. So public dynamic array. And within here, we will instantiate a new fixed size array. This dot array equals new array of objects with a capacity of whatever capacity the default is. So it's going to be 10 by default. And we'll create an overloaded constructor just in case the user passes in their own capacity that they would like to set. So int capacity, this dot capacity, equals whatever capacity that we pass in. Okay, let's instantiate a new dynamic array. Dynamic, make sure to spell it right, dynamic array, I'll call this dynamic array with a lowercase d equals new dynamic array. So I'm not going to pass in an initial capacity and let's print whatever the capacity is of our dynamic array. Dynamic array dot capacity. And this should be 10. Okay, now let's pass in maybe a capacity of five. And this should be five. Yep, cool. So it seems like that works. All right, let's head back to our dynamic array and declare all of the methods that we'll need. Let's create an add method, public void add, and there will be one parameter of object data. Next method, insert public void insert. The two parameters are int index object data. Okay, next method we have delete. Public void delete. There is one parameter of object data. Then we have search. Public int, we're going to return an index, search. And we will need object data. And let's return negative one for now. Then we have private void grow to expand the size of our array. Private void shrink. Then we'll need an is empty method. Public, we will return a Boolean value is empty. And we might as well fill this in right away because there's only one line. Return size is equal to zero. If our size is anything but zero, we will return false. And lastly, to string. Public string to string. And I need to type in something. I'm just going to return null for the time being until we return something. Okay, let's begin by filling in the add method. First, we'll want to check to see if we're at capacity. If our size is greater than or equal to our capacity, 
then we better call the grow method to expand the size of our array. So if there is room, we will take our array at index of size, that should be the end of our array, equals data. Then we will increase our size by one. Now let's head all the way down to the toString method to display the elements of this array, and we just need to iterate over these. Let's declare a local variable of string, 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 and I will set this equal to an empty string, and we will fill in the elements when we iterate over it. So let's iterate over the elements of our array. So let's create a for loop for int i equals zero, and then I will continue this for loop as long as i is less than our size. You can do capacity too if you want to see the entire array, but let's begin with size. i is less than size, and I will increment our index i by one. So I'm going to take our string and append it. String plus equals our array at index of i, that's one, i, plus maybe I'll add a comma, then a space. Then we should return our string, string. Okay, this isn't perfect yet, but let's at least test it. Let's head back to our main Java file and add a few elements to our array using the add method. So let's use the default capacity of 10, so we don't necessarily need to pass in anything. So to add to our array, we can use dynamic array dot, and we declared an add method at the top. So let's add maybe some letters. I will add the letter A, then B, then C. That should be good. So A, B, and C. And then let's call the toString method, system.out.println. And with the toString method, we only have to type in the name of what we would like to display the elements of. So dynamic array, and we don't necessarily need to type toString. So this should display A, B, and C. Now let's format this and clean it up a little bit. Like I would like to get rid of the last comma here and maybe enclose all of these elements within a set of square brackets. So this is what we can do within the toString method. So after the for loop, let's check to see if our string does not equal an empty string. If that is the case, if there are elements to display, let's take our string then I'm going to create a substring and get rid of these last two characters, the comma and the space. So string equals string dot substring. And the length is going to be beginning at index zero. And I will continue this until string dot length method minus two. Then after running this one more time, the comma and space at the end should no longer be there because we created a substring to end at the last element. Then let's enclose all of these elements within a set of square brackets. So I'll use some string concatenation. So I'll add a left square bracket. And then at the end, add a right square bracket. And then these should be within square brackets now. And that looks a lot better. Now, what if our string is empty? Let's return just a set of square brackets using an else statement. Else we will set our string equal to a set of square brackets, and that's it. So let's head back to our main Java file and comment these lines of code out where we add elements to our dynamic array. So let's run this, and we should have an empty set of square brackets. Actually, this would be a good opportunity to test our isEmpty method, so let's check that. So within a print line statement, system.alt.println, I will take my dynamic array and use the is empty method. Then I'm just going to use some string concatenation. Empty colon space plus dynamic array is empty method. And our dynamic array is currently empty. That is true. Then let's fill this with elements A, B, and C. So this should iterate and display the elements of our array and let us know if our array is empty which is false. Since we're here, let's display the size and the capacity of our array too. So system.alt.println, dynamic array dot size. And I'll use some string concatenation here too. So size colon space plus dynamic array dot size and the capacity as well. So capacity plus dynamic array dot capacity. So this dynamic array 
has a size of three, three elements are filled in, and a capacity of 10. For fun, just to see the entire array, let's go to the two-string method and change size to capacity, so we can see all of the elements that are filled in and not filled in. So after running this, we can see our entire array at its full capacity. So we have a size of three, three elements are filled in, but we have a total capacity of 10. The rest of the elements are null. So if we were to count all of these, they should be 10. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nice. So you can change that back to size or you can keep it as capacity. I'll just keep it as capacity for teaching purposes. Now let's fill in the insert method. There's not a whole lot left to do. First, let's check to see if our size is greater than or equal to our capacity. If so, then we'll need to grow our array. So size is greater than or equal to our capacity. If that is the case, call the grow method. What we're going to do at this point is shift all of the elements that are filled in to the right in order to make room for the insertion. So let's use a for loop and iterate over our filled elements in reverse order. I will set int i art index equal to our size. And then I will continue this as long as i is less than our index. Then decrement i by 1. So I'm going to take our array at i and set this equal to array at index of i minus 1. This will shift all of the elements over to the right to make room for the insertion. So we will take our array at index equals whatever data we want to set, then increase our size by 1. So then if we head back to our main Java file, we can insert a value at a given index. So let's take our dynamic array dot use the insert method. Let's say at index zero, I would like to insert an X. So let's try it. Cool, we have X, A, B, C. The size is now four and the capacity is still 10. Now let's work on the delete method. Within here, we're going to iterate over the elements of our array beginning from left to right. So this is fairly easy. Int I equals zero. We will continue this as long as I is less than our size and increment i by one after each iteration. So during each iteration, we will check to see if our array at index of i is equal to the data that we pass in as an argument. So if that is the case, we need to shift all of the elements to the left then. So we'll need a nested for loop for that. Then we will need an index of j because i is already taken. We're within a nested for loop int j equals zero, and I will continue this nested for loop as long as j is less than our size minus i minus one. And then we are going to increment our index j by one during each iteration. So basically, wherever we make the deletion, we're going to shift all of the elements afterwards one spot to the left. So we will take our array at index of i plus j and set this equal to our array at index of i plus j, the same as before, but add plus one. So that will target the next element that comes afterwards. So after we escape this for loop, we will take our array at index of size minus one and set this equal to null. And then we will decrement our size by one. And actually here would be a good place to shrink our array. So let's write an if statement and check to see if our size falls below a certain criteria. So let's say that if our size is less than or equal to a third of the capacity. So capacity divided by three. We don't want to shrink too often just because that's time consuming. And then you may want to cast this as an int because it may not divide evenly. So if our size is underneath a third of the capacity, let's call the shrink method and we will shrink our array by maybe half but we'll get to that later. So then we want to break to escape this for loop then. Okay, let's try this then. So after making the insertion, let's delete, what about A? So dynamic array dot delete, and I do not need to pass in an index, just the data that I'm looking for. All right, so A is no longer in here. We have X, B, and C. The size is three and the capacity is still 10. All right, I promise we're almost finished. Let's fill in the search method next. And this one is fairly short. So we just need to iterate over the elements of our array beginning at index zero. For int i equals zero, 
I will continue this as long as i is less than the size of our array, increment i by 1. If our array at index of i is equal to the data that we're looking for, the data that we pass in as an argument, then we will return whatever i is our index. If we do not find it, we return negative 1. That's kind of like a sentinel value. That means we did not find the value that we're looking for. Okay, so let's search for maybe C. Dynamic array dot search, and I will pass in the data that I'm looking for. I am looking for C, so that should be 0, 1, 2, assuming we insert and delete some values later. And then I'm going to place this within a print line statement. So dynamic array dot search, and I am searching for C. And our result is that C is at index 2, 0, 1, 2. All right, we're near the end. Let's grow and shrink our array, and I'll turn these lines into comments. Now, for the grow method, we're going to instantiate a new array, but we'll increase the capacity first. int new capacity equals our old capacity, which is just named capacity. And let's say we want to increase the capacity by 2. And then I will just cast this as an int. Okay, so after we create a new capacity, we will instantiate a new array. Then we need to copy the elements over. So we'll have an array of objects named new array equals new array of objects with a capacity of our new capacity. And then we need to copy the elements over to our new array. And that's kind of time consuming, but necessary. So we begin at index 0 for int i equals 0. We will continue this as long as i is less than our size. And I will increment this by 1 after each iteration. So we will take our new array at index of i and set this to our old array, just named array, at index of i. And then we will change the capacity to whatever new capacity is. Then lastly, we will set our array to equal our new array. Then let's test it. So I'm going to maybe add a bunch of elements. I'll keep that as a comment. So let's change the capacity of our array to 5. I'll pass in 5 into the constructor so we have less elements to work with. So the size is 3 and the capacity is 5. I'm going to add another element. Let's try D. So size 4, capacity 5. Let's add E. Okay, so currently our array is full. Now let's try to increase the size past the capacity. So I will add F, and this should increase and grow the size of our array. So we have a capacity of 10 now, and we have a bunch of empty elements. And lastly, we just need to shrink this array. And this next part is super simple for the shrink method. Copy everything from the grow method and paste it within the shrink method but change capacity times 2 to capacity divided by 2. Now, we will call the shrink method automatically when the size falls below a third of the capacity. That means we have a lot of wasted memory. Now, let's begin deleting elements. So I will type dynamic array.delete a, then maybe b. So when the size is a third of the capacity, that's when it should shrink. So we're not there yet. Let's delete maybe one or two more times. So let's delete C. And there we go. So the size is 3 and the capacity is now 5. Well, all right. That's a very basic dynamic array. If you're using Java instead of just building your own dynamic array, you might as well just use an array list because it's more efficient and, well, it's already coded for you. But I think this was good practice for us just to understand how dynamic arrays work. So if you would like a copy of all this code, of course, I will post this to the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end, please give this video a thumbs up, a random comment down below. And well, yeah, those are dynamic arrays and well, computer science.